Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm going to share a story narrated by Aaron about his wife cheating on him. Please help by liking and subscribing to the channel. Let's get started. My name is Aaron, and my wife is a nurse. She is beautiful, with a great figure and long, slender legs that look captivating in her nurse uniform. Lately, she has been coming home late and leaving early every day, not even allowing me to touch her. On our third wedding anniversary, she was out exercising in the middle of the night. When I called her, I even heard her whispering. My wife Emily is a night shift nurse at the city hospital. She is beautiful, with a great figure and long, slender legs that are absolutely captivating in her nurse uniform. And I am a hand surgeon at the same hospital. We met during a hand surgery, where Emily was the attending nurse for my patient. Over time, we got to know each other better. I developed feelings for Emily and pursued her, and soon we started a relationship. A few months later, we got married. Over the years, things have been good between us, although we haven't had children. But recently, I've noticed some strange behavior from Emily. Every time she comes home from work, she rushes straight to the bathroom to take a shower. Previously, she used to shower with me right after being intimate. But lately, whenever I try to be intimate with her, Emily always makes excuses, saying she's too tired from work and just wants to rest. Being a doctor working at the hospital myself, I understand how tiring nursing shifts can be. I sympathize with her. And if she says she's tired, I never force her. Today is our third wedding anniversary, and I specifically asked Emily to come home early after her shift. But all the dishes I prepared have gone cold, and Emily still hasn't returned. I check the clock hanging on the wall, it's already past 10 in the evening. I'm starting to get worried. Her recent behavior has been so unusual, and I have a bad feeling in my gut. Could Emily be cheating on me, the thought makes me feel as uneasy as ants crawling under my skin. I take out my phone and call Emily. The phone rings for a while before she finally answers. Darling, are you done with work? Didn't I ask you to come home early? I ask anxiously as soon as the call connects. Sweetie, I'm sorry. I'm at the gym with my friend. I'll be back soon, Emily speaks in fragments, her breathing heavy. My heart sinks. That voice, it sounds just like the way she sounds when we're intimate. Forget that today is our third wedding anniversary? I ask, anger rising within me. Oh! Emily suddenly exclaims, followed by intense panting. My face grows darker. Is she having a conversation with someone while being intimate? The image starts forming in my mind. Honey, I can't talk right now. I think I strain my waist. Emily abruptly hangs up the phone. Hello? Hello? I shout into the phone, trembling all over. I quickly dial again, but nobody answers this time. With a grim expression, I put down the phone, and Emily's heavy breathing echoes in my mind. Looking at the table full of untouched food, I've lost my appetite. I sit on the sofa, waiting for Emily to come back. The wait continues until 2 in the morning. Why are you back so late? Didn't I already tell you to come home early because it's our third anniversary? Also, why were you at the gym at this hour? Why didn't you answer my calls? I ask one question after another, my face growing cold. Emily kicks off her shoes and plops down on the sofa, looking slightly tired. Oh dear, we've been married for so long, why bother with anniversaries? Anna insisted on dragging me to the gym today, and I couldn't do anything about it, she lazily leans on the sofa, yawning. As I watched her tired expression, I couldn't help but feel sorry for her. Our line of work, whether doctors or nurses, can be exhausting. 
Night shift nursing, in particular, takes a toll on one's physical and mental well being. I'll go take a shower, Emily said, getting up and heading towards the bathroom. In that moment, something clicked in my mind, and I grabbed her. What are you doing? Emily exclaimed. I pushed her onto the sofa and exclaimed, Today is our wedding anniversary, and you didn't come back to have a candle at dinner with me. You owe me some compensation, don't you, comma, I just finished exercising and I'm all sweaty and stinky. Emily tried to push away my hands. Sweat from my wife smells good, comma, I kissed Emily and my hands started wandering. But as I touched her skin, I felt something strange. I slipped my hand under her clothes and finally confirmed it, she wasn't wearing a bra, comma, where is your bra? My face turned sour. In the darkness, Emily didn't notice the change in my expression. It's in my bag. I wore a sports bra during the workout and didn't feel like putting it back on afterward. What's the matter, comma, Emily's answer seemed reasonable, and I couldn't find any grounds to doubt her. Although I felt something was off, I didn't press further. I took a glance at her bag, and sure enough, her bra was inside. I felt relieved and embraced Emily on the sofa, and we engaged in passionate intimacy. Afterwards, I wanted to shower together, but she pushed me away. I need to use the bathroom. Stop being so clingy, Emily gave me a stern look. I sheepishly smiled and backed off. Sitting on the sofa, I smoked a cigarette, and my eyes unintentionally fell on Emily's bag. Almost involuntarily, I took out the bra from her bag and examined it closely. As I looked, my eyes fixated on a dried white stain in the corner of the bra. This is. My mind went blank, and I was in utter confusion. Instinctively, I wanted to rush into the bathroom and confront Emily, but I held myself back. I sniffed the white stain on the bra, but there was no smell. This kind of evidence couldn't prove anything. I couldn't jump to conclusions and assume it was a man's bodily fluid. What did Emily do in the evening? I desperately wanted to know what she did, who she was with, and if she was really cheating on me, comma, at that moment, Emily finished showering and came out. I quickly stuffed the bra back into her bag. Emily was drying her hair and holding her chest. What's wrong? I controlled myself not to show any suspicion. Emily pouted, I accidentally burned myself while eating cereal this afternoon. Look, it's still red comma, as a doctor, I could tell it was a burn mark caused by high temperature. So, the white stain on Emily's bra was just residue from spilled cereal, comma, I felt a weight lifted off my shoulders. At the same time, I silently celebrated that I didn't act impulsively and confront Emily directly earlier. Otherwise, things would have escalated. You should be more careful. Let me get some burn ointment for you, comma. I found a burn ointment in the medical kit and applied it to her left chest. By the time we finished, it was already past four in the morning. I had to go to work the next day, so I hurriedly went to sleep. I only slept for three hours before the alarm clock woke me up. At the hospital, I felt exhausted all day. Luckily, I didn't have any surgeries scheduled, as I wouldn't dare step into the operating room in my current state. Dr. Aaron, you didn't sleep well last night, a nurse disguised as Anna greeted me. Oh, Anna, it was our third wedding anniversary yesterday, and I stayed up late, I smiled at her. Anna paused and looked at me strangely, her eyes filled with curiosity. Dr. Aaron, Emily was with me at the gym until late last night, and you too. Did that, comma, I blushed, coughed lightly, and changed the subject, well, I actually have something to attend to. I can't talk right now, comma, I quickly walked away. Behind me, I could hear Anna's low laughter. I turned around the corner of the corridor, and the expression on my face instantly returned to calm. 
Just now, I was testing Anna. The fact proved that Emily was indeed with Anna at the gym last night. It seemed that I had been overthinking everything. After I finished work and returned home, Emily had already left for her night shift. Ever since Emily started working night shifts, our time together had become less frequent. Boom! It was a little past eight in the evening when suddenly a strong wind started blowing outside, accompanied by thunder. I glanced out of the window and noticed that Emily hadn't taken her umbrella. I was worried that she would have difficulty coming back, so I grabbed an umbrella and drove to the hospital. By the time I arrived at the hospital, the rain was pouring heavily. I went to the nurse station on the third floor of the inpatient department but didn't see Emily. I wasn't surprised because she was probably doing her rounds. Dr. Aaron? A young nurse came out of one of the patient rooms, holding a bottle of medicine. She looked surprised when she saw me. That night, I didn't sleep a wink. The next morning, I woke up looking tired. The noise of me getting up woke Emily up. She rubbed her sleepy eyes and said, Be careful on your way, honey. Hmm, I replied and turned around to leave. In the hospital office, I sat on a chair feeling drowsy. Dr. Aaron, were you up to mischief last night? It was my colleague from the same department, Jacob, who also happened to be Anna's husband. But Jacob and I were not on the same level. Jacob came from a medical family, and his uncle was the director of our hospital. Don't mention it, I didn't sleep well all night, I yawned. Jacob looked at me with a half-smile and said, You didn't stay up all night, did you? My wife told me that on your third anniversary the day before yesterday, you and Emily were up until dawn. Dr. Aaron, although we're still young, we shouldn't be doing that. My face changed for a moment, and I finally forced a bitter smile. Don't listen to Anna's nonsense. What's wrong? Did something happen to you? Jacob noticed my change in mood and put his arm around my shoulder, asking. My eyes flickered, and I sighed. I needed to let it out, as it was weighing heavily on me. With a troubled expression, I told Jacob about my suspicion of Emily having an affair. Jacob stared at me, disbelief written all over his face. Emily having an affair? That's impossible. I bitterly smiled and said, I didn't want to believe it either. But that's how things are. You didn't see the pictures that guy sent. It was some revealing lingerie, and they were clearly having fun. Well. Sigh. Jacob hesitated, looking at me, and finally let out a long sigh. What are you planning to do? Jacob patted my shoulder. I gritted my teeth, my eyes wide open, and said, I'm going to find that guy and castrate him. You're that ruthless? Jacob's mouth dropped open. I looked at Jacob and asked, what would you do if Anna betrayed you? Jacob nodded, well, in that case, I'd have to castrate him too. There was nothing Jacob could say to advise me in this situation. But after I spoke out, my troubled state of mind eased a bit. Thanks, Jacob. Let's not talk about it for now. Do I have a surgery scheduled for today? I wiped my face and regained my usual composure. Jacob nodded, yes, it's a minor surgery. Are you okay in your current state? If not, I can take over. You seem like you're about to fall asleep just standing. I waved my hand, it's fine. I'll wash my face and have a cup of coffee. That should do the trick. Jacob shrugged, okay then. If you need any help, just let me know. You don't have to go buy coffee, I happen to have an extra cup. Here you go. With that, Jacob took a cup of coffee from his desk and gave it to me. 
I was momentarily surprised but accepted it and took a big sip. After finishing the cup of coffee, my drowsiness significantly diminished. I went to the restroom and splashed cold water on my face, fully awakening myself. After checking the time, I changed into surgical attire and walked into the operating room. Anesthesia. Scalpel number three. Hemostatic gauze. Sutures. Comma, the surgery proceeded smoothly and methodically. I had performed this type of surgery countless times before, and my movements were swift. We were nearing the final stages. However, as I was suturing the patient, my vision suddenly darkened, and the needles in my hand appeared blurry. I shook my head to clear it, but it only made me more dizzy. My hand slipped, and the needle pierced the patient's bone. Thud, comma, I fell heavily to the ground. Struggling to get back up but feeling weak all over. Dr. Aaron, comma, the surgeons and nurses in the operating room exclaimed. Continue. The surgery. I managed to say before passing out. When I woke up, I found myself lying in a hospital bed. Awake? Jacob stood by my bedside. My eyelids felt heavy, and my immediate concern was the condition of the patient. Jacob's gaze shifted, and he fell silent. My face turned pale, and I anxiously asked, Jacob, what happened, comma, a Jacob sighed and patted my hand, oh, dear. Aaron, didn't I tell you? If you couldn't handle it, you should have let me do the surgery. Why did you insist on doing it, comma, that last move of yours, you accidentally pierced the patient's bone. Luckily, the nurses in the operating room called me in time, and I had to redo the sutures and handle the situation. Otherwise, the consequences would have been unimaginable, comma, that's good, that's good. Thank you, Jacob, I breathed a sigh of relief. Thank you? Bullshit. Jacob cursed impatiently. He stared at me solemnly. Dr. Aaron, the hospital is very dissatisfied with your mistake this time. They believe it would be better for you to take a break for a while, comma, furthermore. Comma, Jacob hesitated. I felt a knot in my stomach, already anticipating what he was about to say. With a bitter smile, I said, just tell me, I'm fine, comma, furthermore, your promotion to chief is now out of the question, comma, I closed my eyes slowly, clenching my fists. Ah, next time then. You should get some rest for now. The hospital director just told me that you haven't slept for two days and nights, comma, hey, Jacob tried to console me before leaving the ward. After he left, I opened my eyes, filled with anger. It's all because of Emily, comma, if she hadn't cheated on me at this time and left me mentally devastated, I wouldn't have had such an accident, comma, Emily. I will find that man and make you adulterous scum pay the price, comma, I roared in a low voice. I spent a day lying in the hospital, drifting in and out of sleep. During this sleep, I slept until late at night. When I opened my eyes again, I saw Emily sleeping soundly, leaning on my hospital bed. My eyes widened, and anger filled my face. I threw off the covers, waking her up. Husband, you're awake? Emily said happily. What are you doing here? I said coldly. Emily looked concerned. When I came to work tonight, Anna told me that you fainted in the operating room. I was worried about you, comma, husband, are you okay? Emily tightly held my hand. I jerked my hand away. I'm fine, just go, comma, husband, what's wrong with you? What did I do wrong? Emily hesitated, biting her lower lip with a look of grievance. I laughed coldly in my heart. What did you do wrong, comma, you did nothing wrong. I'm the one who's wrong. I couldn't even see what kind of woman you truly are, comma, I took a deep breath, suppressing the anger in my heart. 
It's nothing, just go about your business. I'm a bit tired and want to sleep some more, comma, Emily looked at me deeply, nodded, and left. Alone in the empty ward, I vented my frustration silently. When Emily finished her night shift, she came to see me again. I pretended to be asleep, and she stood there for a while before leaving. As soon as she left, I immediately got up, changed my clothes, and followed her. This was a good opportunity. Maybe I could catch Emily red-handed with the man she was having an affair with. Emily walked out of the hospital and got into a car. My eyes widened, and I clenched my teeth, grinding them loudly. I couldn't see the figure inside the car clearly due to the dark night. But there was something familiar about that car. Where had I seen it before? As I pondered, the car had already driven away. In the light of the street lamp near the hospital entrance, I vaguely saw the numbers 3 and 5 on the car's license plate. Emma, are you doing your rounds? I asked with a smile. Emma, a nurse who had joined this year, saw me holding two umbrellas and asked, Dr. Aaron, are you here to give Emily an umbrella? Comma, I chuckled and nodded. Emma's eyes filled with envy. Emily is so lucky to have such a good husband. Not only is he highly skilled in medicine, but he's also considerate, comma, I laughed and denied it. By the way, have you seen Emily? I asked her. Emma looked puzzled. Dr. Aaron, Emily switched shifts today. Didn't she tell you, comma, my hand holding the umbrella froze, and my face changed. After a moment, I quickly regained composure and scratched my head. You're right, my memory failed me. She did mention it, but I forgot comma, okay then, you take care. I should be leaving. I greeted her and turned to leave. After taking a few steps, I turned back and handed the umbrella to Emma. You didn't bring an umbrella in this weather? Take this, comma, uh, Emma looked grateful and said, thank you, dr. Aaron, comma, I waved my hand and left the hospital ward. Once inside my car, my face immediately darkened. Emily switched shifts today? Why didn't she tell me, comma, if she's not at the hospital, where did she go, comma, my thoughts scattered, and my mind filled with chaotic speculation. The rain outside beat against the car window, creating a rhythmic sound. It mirrored the turmoil in my heart, surging and crashing. I took out my phone, intending to call Emily, but my finger hovered over the dial pad and stopped. What would I ask her, comma, if she's having an affair, comma, all the suspicious signs pointing to Emily were just my conjecture, lacking concrete evidence. Damn it, comma, I angrily pounded the steering wheel, and the car emitted a brief honk. I drove home and lay in bed, tossing and turning. At 1 a. M. I heard the sound of high heels outside the door. The footsteps were familiar, and it was Emily returning. As expected, the door opened, and Emily walked in. I stepped out of the bedroom, looking at Emily, and noticed she hadn't brought an umbrella with her. It was still pouring outside, but Emily wasn't wet. That meant someone had dropped her off. Who brought her back? Was it her adulterous lover, comma, my eye twitched. You're back? I stared at Emily, my voice cold. Emily, surprised to see me still awake, paused for a moment. Honey, why aren't you sleeping at this hour, comma, with such heavy rain? I was worried about you, I said, staring directly at Emily. Emily hesitated for a moment, then giggled. Oh, honey, don't worry. I would take a taxi back in the rain, wouldn't I? A comma, I nodded and asked, was the hospital busy tonight? Comma, it was all right, same old routine. Busy and annoying, Emily complained. My eyes flickered, and I didn't say anything. I turned around and went back to the bedroom. 
After Emily finished her shower and returned to the room, she quickly fell asleep. I turned around, looking at the sleeping Emily, my face filled with an indistinguishable mix of emotions. Buzz comma, Emily's phone, placed by the bedside, vibrated. I squinted and saw a message inside. It read a comma, yesterday I stained your lingerie. I'll buy you a new set another day. Take a look at these photos of you. My eyes narrowed, and my hand holding the phone trembled. Yesterday, Emily had explained that the white stain on her underwear was caused by spilled cereal, and I had believed her. But now, looking at the text messages on her phone, it was all lies. It was definitely a man's bodily fluid. Emily was indeed fooling around with another man last night, comma, the message preview only displayed this information, and I couldn't see the rest of the messages. I urgently wanted to know what the other person had sent to Emily, so I immediately entered the lock screen password on her phone. Password incorrect. I was taken aback and tried again, but it was still wrong. Anger welled up inside me. Emily and I knew each other's phone passwords as a testament to the trust we had in each other. With no secrets between us. But now, her phone password had been changed at some point without my knowledge, comma, I looked at the familiar face sleeping next to me, feeling a sudden sense of unfamiliarity. I exhaled heavily and used Emily's finger to unlock the phone. I saw the complete message that the other person had sent. Yesterday I stained your lingerie. I'll buy you a new set another day. Take a look at these, do you like them? It was followed by several pictures of revealing and seductive lingerie. Emily had never worn such lingerie for me before. I had bought her lingerie in the past, but she always said she was too shy to wear such clothes, so I respected her wishes. But now. Clearly, Emily had worn it in front of another man. My heart felt like it was being stabbed with a knife. My back teeth were grinding together, and my hand trembled as I selected one of the pictures of sexy lingerie and replied, I like this set, comma, I stared intently at Emily's phone, waiting to see how the other person would respond. But in the next moment, I was dumbfounded. Sorry, wrong person, the other person replied, followed by the recall of the provocative lingerie pictures. I stared at the empty conversation box, lost in thought. Was it really just a mistake? Did he realize that the person replying wasn't Emily, but me? But that couldn't be possible. He didn't have any surveillance in my house, so how could he know it was me replying? Could it be that there was some secret code or communication between him and Emily, comma, I put Emily's phone back and my eyes flickered. The next day, when I returned home after running errands, I noticed the car with the same license plate number parked outside my building. Those two adulterers. My eyes turned red, and I rushed up the stairs. However, as I stepped into the elevator, my eyes widened. That car. Was it Jacob's? Comma, my face froze, and I quickly took out my phone, scrolling through Jacob's Twitter. Soon, my eyes stopped on a photo. It was taken during Jacob's road trip to Las Vegas, where he was sitting on top of the car, embracing Anna. I zoomed in on the photo, and my eyes narrowed. It was the same car, comma, was Jacob the one Emily was cheating with? No. It couldn't be true. How could Jacob do such a thing? It was absolutely impossible. I couldn't believe any of this. When the elevator doors opened, I was still in a daze. I bit my lip, the pain bringing me back to my senses. I walked out and arrived at the entrance of my home. I noticed that the door was slightly ajar, not completely closed. I could hear the voices of a man and a woman conversing inside. Jacob, did Aaron find out about the message you sent to me last night? Yeah, he replied to me, comma, what should we do now, comma, what does it matter? 
He doesn't know who it is. Can you believe it? He should be grateful to me for helping him with his surgery, comma, Jacob, you're amazing, comma, am I amazing or not? You've seen it over the years, comma, ah, Jacob, you're so bad, comma, he, do you want me to be even worse? I've already called Anna. Later, you and your best friend can serve me together, comma, I froze at the doorway, staring at the scene unfolding inside, my eyes filled with a mix of disbelief, anger, and heartbreak. You keep doing this, and we won't be able to face each other. What if DR? Aaron comes back, what are you afraid of? You went to see him earlier, and he was sleeping like a log, oh, by the way, Jacob, why did he suddenly collapse during the surgery, he <laughs> he, I added something to his coffee. He didn't have a choice but to faint. This DR. Aaron, he even wanted to compete with me for the chief position. He should know what he's worth, the conversation between Emily and Jacob in the room left me frozen in place. Emily and Jacob have been involved with each other for a long time, was it Jacob who sent the provocative lingerie pictures to Emily that night? Was Anna also involved with them? Were they in a threesome, so, on their wedding anniversary night, Emily went to fool around with Jacob and Anna, the spilled cereal on her chest was also fake, my surgical accident and the opportunity for a promotion to chief were all calculated by Jacob, each of these events kept assaulting my sanity, and I trembled all over, consumed by anger. I kicked the door open and rushed in. In the room, Jacob and Emily were already naked, engaged in an unspeakable act. They never expected that I would come back at that moment. When Jacob and Emily heard the sound and turned to see me entering, they were shocked. I'll kill you two cheaters, without saying a word, I swung my fists at them. Jacob was unprepared and took several punches, causing blood to trickle from the corner of his mouth. Emily even dared to intervene and was slapped down by me. I took out my phone and snapped a couple of pictures. Jacob, I treated you like a brother, and you slept with my wife. Are you even human anymore, burning with anger? I stared at Jacob with fury. Jacob wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth and looked at me coldly, saying, Dr. Aaron, who do you think you are? Still talking about brotherhood? Are you worthy, if I hadn't slept with Emily back then, do you think you could have become official? It was because I recognized Emily's good performance and rewarded you, but now you still want to become the chief? That position was reserved for me, you know, if you know what's good for you, you'll apologize to me now, and this matter will be forgotten. Otherwise, that patient won't keep quiet, and you won't be able to be a doctor, Jacob not only showed no remorse but also became arrogant. I clenched my teeth tightly and suddenly burst into laughter. I raised my phone and looked at Jacob with a sinister smile. Jacob, all of this is recorded, Jacob's face changed, and he tried to snatch the phone. You recorded it? I smirked and kicked him in the stomach. I want to see who will be finished first, you or me. I glared at the two of them fiercely and turned around to leave. I took the recording to the police station overnight. The next day, the police arrived to investigate and collect evidence. Jacob was agitated and hadn't properly cleaned up yesterday's coffee cup and the prepared drugs. Soon, he was taken away by the police. My uncle is the hospital director. How dare you touch me, Jacob, facing imminent doom, continued to shout. Shut up, the hospital leaders arrived and the dean, with a grim expression, slapped Jacob across the face. He cursed, how did I end up with a nephew like you, Dr. Aaron, don't worry. What's rightfully yours can't be taken away. The process for your promotion to chief is already in progress, the dean reassured me, patting my shoulder with kind words. But I could clearly see a cold glint in his eyes. I smirked inwardly. This hypocrite, Jacob said the chief position was already reserved, and this incident won't affect you, no need. 
I resign, I said, handing in my resignation letter in front of the many hospital leaders. Before leaving, I turned to the dean and said, Dean, if you can reserve the chief position for your nephew, you must have made a lot of money, right? The dean's face changed drastically. What nonsense are you spouting? I chuckled and left the hospital. In the following days after resigning, I was busy dealing with the divorce lawsuit against Emily. This woman actually wanted to take half of my assets. I hired a lawyer and presented the evidence of her infidelity. The lawyer told me that with this evidence, the lawsuit would be easy to win and I would definitely come out on top. During this period, Emily came to me and caused a scene. She even went to see my mother. But I simply showed her the video evidence of her affair, and she quieted down. Eventually, the lawsuit ended quickly, and Emily left with nothing. She didn't get a penny. Sometime later, I heard that Jacob's uncle was caught for embezzlement and illicit sale of medical equipment. The resentment in my heart finally dissipated. Well done, he and Jacob are birds of a feather. They deserve to be caught. Afterward, I took a rest for about half a month, then regained my composure and found another hospital to work at. With my exceptional medical skills, I climbed to the position of chief within six months.